Hey everybody, this is Jim at uh, sp500chart.com. It is December 10th, 2013, and uh, I'm coming to you from my hotel room here in uh, South Georgia. Fortunately, got uh, things wrapped up a little bit sooner this evening than I did yesterday, so I'm able to get this to you uh, more quickly. So let's uh, take a look at the chart after I remind you that uh, the website and this video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at either one of those things, either the website or the video, is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And please, make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. So look, um, today, down moderately, um, not terribly concerned about that because we're right in between um, support and resistance. I will remind you that what we're looking at on this screen right now could be a head and shoulders top. And if we were to continue to sell off over the next few days and find ourselves down around 1780, I would watch that line like a hawk. Okay? Um, we, the the, the S&P can sell off a bit here and still recover and still set a new high. I'm, I don't think that the weakness we saw today was really anything that necessarily speaks of a, uh, a short-term or an intermediate-term top. But we need to watch what develops over the next two, three to five days to see if this is going to continue to move down because if we take this line out right here, then we're looking at a target, a minimum target, from this pattern. Come to daddy. Of about 1745. And we can say that with, with uh, pretty easily because, as you can see, we're dealing with a near, nearly horizontal line of support here for this potential head and shoulders pattern. Um, these patterns sometimes get saved. I've even seen them come down, break a neckline by a little bit, and then zoom up and set a new high. But the, the one time that I remember uh, doing that where I was short of stock, this was a good while back, um, that stock ended up just making an even larger head and shoulders pattern. So, uh, what we're seeing here is not a sign of great strength. It's a sign of some weakness. Even if we get the save and we end up getting up into the 1830s or 1840s, this still shows something of, of a dynamic in the market where we get a rally, then we get people chasing it up just a little higher, and now it appears like we... We, uh, yesterday, after hitting those highs right around, oh, 1812, maybe a little bit lower than that, you know, it's like the, the, the market <clears throat> and investors looked at that and said, you know, that's good enough for now. So, if the S&P can set up a rally that exceeds our previous high of 1813 and change. Let's just leave that black line right there. If we get up over that, then then it can it can run on up a bit. But if we fail to get that new high, and we come down and break this line, that's what head and shoulders patterns are made of. We have not yet made a full back test on this green line. Um, I don't think what we saw yesterday really qualifies. It just came a bit short of, of making, making the kind of back test you would, uh, you would hope to see. 
Uh, and that is, of course, if we're using our, our uh, low point back here on, uh, I believe that was the 10th. If we were to go with this low point uh, that, that came a little bit later in that week, then that would be a back test. So that's, I think that's a call that we just have to wait and see how that works out. I still like using, instead of this little intermediate bottom here, check that, instead of this little short-term bottom, I like using the, uh, the lows that are just unmistakably technically significant. And I think this one right here was. So guys, we're really kind of in the same situation that we were in yesterday, only with a little bit more of a bias towards some weakness in the market, but not in any way decisively so. So let's just leave it at that. Um, you can see, for those of you who don't know what a head and shoulders pattern is, it's when you have a rally, a larger rally, and then a third rally that fails to meet or exceed the, uh, the middle rally. And they call it a head and shoulders because this is like a shoulder, a head, and then another shoulder. And these patterns often show up um, at fairly significant parts in the chart. The S&P over the past four and three quarters years has been littered with head and shoulders patterns. We've had tops. We've had bottoms. We've had inverted head and shoulders patterns. And I can only think of maybe one, possibly two. Now, one, I say possibly two. I can, I can think of one right off the bat that just didn't work. But the other one, there was a good reason why it didn't work. Um, and I don't, well, I think we've talked about it before, but after the market bottom of 3 9 uh, 2009, we, we rallied up to, I believe, in the 1100s or so, and then we made a head and shoulders top, but we had not yet come close to the target for that head and shoulders bottom, so it, it really just, it, it couldn't take things down to where it wanted to because that larger pattern was underneath it, pushing up against it, if that makes sense. So guys, let's, uh, let's just call this the video for December 10th, 2013. Basically the same story with just a little bit more of a slant towards bearishness. Again, this is the line to watch. That line breaks in about 1778. Then we're looking at a, at a, at a pretty quick 2 to 2.5% two decline in the S&P um, as a minimum target from breaking this neckline. So there you have it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. Take care.